We're now going to take a look at functions performed within communication systems and what we're basically going to establish is a number of different steps that are performed from the creation to the destination when a message is transmitted. So the general functions that occur within communication systems in passing messages between sources and destinations include message creation, organization of packets at the interface between source and transmitter, signal generation by the transmitter, transmission, synchronizing the exchange, addressing and routing, error detection and correction, and security and management. So what we're going to do now is look at these stages one by one and actually see what's involved in each of these different stages. As they are listed here, they are kind of in a set order with obviously message creation being first and then the message being organized into separate data packets. But as we go through the stages, some of them that come up towards the end um, are kind of two stage processes where a bit of it happens at the beginning and a bit of it happens at the end, such as error detection and correction. Obviously, the error detection is applied at, the, at an earlier stage and then checked at that stage. So I'll try to elaborate upon some of those things as we go through each of these stages. So let's begin looking at these stages. So firstly, we have message creation. And this is where the participant or user using a combination of hardware and software, create a message. For example, a user may use a laptop, which is hardware, okay, to compose an email message using the Gmail app. And the Gmail app is application software. Okay, and remember, that's why this is called the application layer. Okay, usually the user is interacting with the system using some sort of combination of hardware and application software to create their message. Okay, so in this case, it's an email and they're using the Gmail app which is their application software. Now, once this message has been created, we need the next organizer into packets. So it is arranged into data packets okay, for transmission. Okay, and now this is for transmission, so it's before the transmission stage, which means it's the control and addressing layer. Okay, a header and trailer are added to the data packet, okay, containing data relevant and the applied protocols for transmission. Okay, so each of the data packets has the protocol. So in the case of the TCP protocol, which is at the um, control and addressing layer, it would be the checksum protocol being put in the header or the trailer when each packet is sent through for transmission. Okay, which is then checked at the receiver's end, okay, when the message is decoded. After this stage, we have the signal generation by the transmitter. So this is the initiation of the message transfer by the transmitter. So now we're looking at the transmission layer because we're actually at the transmitter of the communication systems framework. Okay, the transmitters, which could be a switch, a router, a network interface card, and we're gonna look at a, lot, a whole variety of network hardware, represents the bits as a wave. So it's turned into a wave now, which is then transmitted through wired or wireless mediums, such as optical fiber, or through radio waves if we're using wireless technology. So once this signal has been generated, the next step is the transmission. Okay, and that's a combination of what we've just done with the previous two steps. So the message data packets are transferred through mediums, so the optical fiber or the radio waves, as a particular waveform. Okay, and this is obviously transmission layer. Once transmission is taking place and is established, okay, the exchange between the transmitter and the receiver has to be synchronized. And this is probably one of the more complex stages here. So the sender and the receiver need to synchronize the transmission through the synchronization of both devices' internal clocks. This is achieved through the use of star and end frames, which have a special bit sequence that the receiving station recognizes to indicate the start and end of each packet. Okay, so as the packets are coming through, a start frame tells um, the receiver that this is a new packet and an end frame says this is the end of this packet. Okay, and that helps it synchronize its clock, okay, with the actual sender's clock. So the clocks are in sync on both ends, okay, in order for the packets to be sent through at a consistent rate, okay, and obviously help preventing any type of errors from occurring. Now, this is one of those stages that obviously happens a bit at the beginning and a bit at the end in addressing and routing. Okay, obviously addressing takes place, okay, in the communication control and addressing stage, which is before the message is sent. Okay, but also takes place at this end, 
okay, after the message has been sent to ensure that the message got sent to the correct location. So each data packet is transmitted needs to be addressed, okay, and we address using IP addresses, okay, for transmitting data over the internet, and we address with MAC addresses for within a network. So routers will be used to send packets to its IP address, and switches will be used to send packets down a network using MAC addresses to the receiver. Okay, so we've got to think of it that the IP address sends the um, data to a specific network, then once on that network, the MAC address sends that data within that network to a specific device. After that, we do our error detection and correction. Okay, so now we are, our protocol is checked once again now on the receiver's end. So error detection codes are added to the headers and trailers, okay, as we've already mentioned. As each layer unpacks the data, the protocols perform an error check calculation. And the three we look at in this unit are paribit, checksum, and CRC. So if an error is detected, so they do the same checksum, Okay, and they've come up with a different value, the packet is discarded and then a signal is sent back to the sender to send that message again okay, and transmit it again. Finally, we have security and management. Okay, and this is basically ensuring that the data comes through okay, is safe. You know, No one's hacking into our network or intercepting it. So security methods such as encryption and decryption can be applied to a message okay, and its packets in order to prevent sensitive data from being intercepted and read. Okay, and a lot of data transferred is sensitive. Okay, uh, we've talked about SSL protocol, which applied to HTTP, becomes HTTPS. That performs encryption in, on data that is transmitted over the internet. Okay, and usually it's securing things such as bank details or personal details about users. Okay, so this is to stop people from tapping into networks and reading the data that is being transmitted. Okay, encryption obviously scrambles the data, so if it is intercepted, it's unreadable. But then on the other end, we need the decryption process, which turns the scrambled data back into its readable message form. Firewalls may also be used to prevent harmful data from entering a network. Okay, so this might be if someone's trying to transmit data to my network that contains viruses or spyware to then go through all my records within my network. Okay, firewalls are in place to read okay, the incoming data and then block it if it's seen as harmful. So. I hope this actual video has helped you understand these different stages okay, of um, transmission of data within the communication systems unit. Okay, It all starts with message creation, turning the data into packets, turning those data packets into a waveform and beginning the actual transmission, Okay, transmitting the data and synchronizing exchange with the receiver, sending the data to a specific address, applying error detection to ensure that the data when it gets to its destination is correct, Okay, and security methods to keep that data safe. So I hope you got a better understanding of these processes.